day to all of you. Let's continue our lessons on Assessment 101. For today, we will have a conversation on the types of assessment. When we say types of assessment, we will discuss the types of assessment in terms of the different types of assessment. But before we proceed, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Please click the subscribe and bell icon so that you will get notified whenever I have new videos. Thank you. Now, when do teachers assess students? Or when do teachers assess students' attainment of learning outcomes? If the assessment is ongoing and continuous, then the answer to this question is always. However, if assessment is ongoing and continuous, there is an element of time for assessment that has meaning to the teachers as assessors and students, the individuals being assessed with respect to self-assessment. The time element can be separated into four categories, which are helpful to use when making decision to facilitate learning. The different types or times for assessment are diagnostic, formative, summative, and generative. First, let's try to discuss what a diagnostic assessment is. One way to think about diagnostic assessment is, is that it assesses a student's strength and weaknesses, knowledge and skills prior or before instruction. Another way to think about it, it is a baseline to work from. Diagnostic is done at the beginning of the school year, beginning of a unit, beginning of a lesson, etc. Diagnostic assessment is used to probe into what is known before facilitating instruction. It usually precedes learning activities, but it doesn't have to. It can come anytime during the lesson. For example, if during the lesson a question arises that depends on the background information, the teacher can ask a diagnostic question to check the student's level of understanding about that background information. At the end of the diagnostic question, the teacher can decide if the student are ready to proceed or if the background information needs to be discussed before continuing the day's planned activities. Diagnostic assessment is where teachers will determine if the student may have may have learning difficulties as well. It is important because it allows the teacher to identify where students may be learning something the wrong way or falling behind in an area or subject matter. Diagnostic assessment can help to keep students from falling between the gaps. Challenges in diagnostic assessment may include the teacher not being able to have enough time to confer with the students in order to know where they may have or they may have they may be having difficulties. Next, what is formative assessment? Formative assessment refers to a wide variety of method, methods that teachers use to conduct in-process evaluation of students' comprehension, learning needs, and academic progress during a lesson 
unit or a course. The general goal of formative evaluation is to collect detailed information that can be used to improve the instruction and student learning while it is happening. What makes assessment formative is, is not the design of a test, the technique, or self-evaluation per se, but the way it is used, that is, to inform in-process teaching and learning modification. One way to think about it is that formative assessment determines the student performance during the instruction and usually occurs regularly throughout the instruction process. Hence, many teachers believe that formative assessment is an integral part of effective teaching because it is done while the instruction is going on. In formative assessment, the student must know the learning goals in order to achieve success. Hence, the teachers need to constantly make sure that the students are learning what they need to know in order to move on to the next task. Formative evaluation takes time and requires constant observation and conferencing with students. Teachers should be giving students descriptive feedback in order for the students to know what they need to work on and then improve on their own knowledge, skills, and attitude. With this form of ongoing assessment, challenges may include students not remembering the learning goals and therefore not meeting the success criteria. Third, what is summative assessment? Summative assessment is usually associated with the time immediately after facilitating learning. It is an assessment administered at the end of an instructional unit or a course. Summative assessment are often high stakes, which means that they have a high value. High stakes tests, like the summative tests, are tests used to make important decisions about students. This include whether students should be promoted, allowed to graduate, or admitted to other programs. High stake tests are designed to measure whether or not content and performance standards established by the school or Department of Education have been achieved. This type of assessment typically takes a large portion of student marks in the class. If a student have, is having a difficulty, a difficult day, and, have, and has some issues on the day that a summative test is taking, it could negatively impact their final mark potentially their future for graduation, admission to higher level of education, and even employment. Summative assessment are necessary to determine what degree of the materials students have learned. It gives a chance to, okay, it gives students a chance to demonstrate their knowledge on a particular unit. Lastly, for this topic is generative assessment. Generative assessment is an assessment that aims to look into the student's understanding of being able to apply, use, adapt, change, or alter, or join ideas that have been joined, that have been taught. The purpose of seeing how well the student understand Okay, what they have learned. Generative assessment is that uh, is an assessment that tries to determine if the information has become strong enough to be usable beyond the scope of examples of which they are familiar or examples that are similar to what was presented during instruction or 
they're able to use it in the ways that were presented and demonstrate a variety of application, analysis, and synthesis with the information. Generative learning theory describes the process of learners constructing meaning by making connections between their existing knowledge, belief, and experiences, and stimuli. Here, we are using generative to describe the creative actions and problem solving of learners. Again, one of these kinds of assessment based on timing can come any time of the lesson and it only makes sense with respect to the purpose of the teacher within the sequence of facilitating learning. When planning a teacher, uh, when planning a teacher, when planning I mean, a teacher can anticipate all four types that will be used throughout the sequence for its concept within the sequence. The planning will prepare this, the teacher to interact with the students and be ready to facilitate the learning in real time that will be individualized for its student. To, the, to end this episode on the types of assessment in terms of different times of assessment, please remember this. Assessment can run the gamut from start to finish when it comes to instruction. Think of it like a race that has a start and finish line and many stations in between to refuel, okay, in order to refuel. To end this episode, okay, Okay, and lastly, always remember that assessment, as, I, I mean assessments help, assessments help the teachers determine what to teach, how to teach, and in the end, how effectively they taught it. Continuous, okay, assessment is a continuous process. It never stops as teachers never stop teaching and students never stop learning to. Assessment is about what, how, and how effectively they taught. Again, thank you very much. Please watch the next episode on Assessment 101, wherein we'll be discussing the purposes of assessment. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.